Hello, everyone out there. Thanks so much for tuning in to another episode of the Sales Dev Squad. It's your host, Matteo Elvira, with a very special guest for you today, Mr. Thomas Jansen, who is a military veteran for the U.S. Army and is currently an SDR over at Vantex. Thanks so much for hopping on the podcast today, Thomas. How are you? Good. Thank you for having me. I'm glad to be here. Appreciate it, man. Um, so I really kick off every podcast very similarly. Um, you mind just telling us, uh, I know we connected on LinkedIn not too long ago, man. Um, do you mind just telling us a little bit more about, I guess, your new role at Advantix? Um, obviously, you just started this week. So would love to learn, I guess, a little bit more about kind of your experience so far, what Advantix does, and I guess what your role is over there? Okay. Yeah, sure. Um, so I just started, uh, as you said, on Monday was my first day. Um, I went into the position with uh, no background um, other than the uh, boot camp that I took online. Um, but I did well enough in there where I felt comfortable going out and applying to these jobs, obviously. Um, that's the reason I took the boot camp. But um, I walked into my interviews. I was a little nervous, but I'm a fairly confident person just in general. So I walked into the interviews and I killed, you know, I had two in-person interviews and one phone call interview. Um, knocked them out of the park each time. So I um, felt really good about it. Um, I walked away from my second interview and um, I got a picture of how the sales team was run. So I really liked it and um, I, I just couldn't, like I, I had other interviews lined up and everything, but I, I ended up canceling those because I wanted to be at this place. I, I enjoyed the vibe that I got from it so much. Um, so I walked in, um, or I'm sorry, they called me and they're like, well, Hey, you know, even though you don't know anything about, um, property taxes, we're going to give you the job. And I'm like, well, awesome. I was like, you just teach me. How to learn. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yesterday and today I spent a majority of the day, uh, learning about property taxes, uh, interesting stuff, you know, <laughs> like I've never really thought about it before, but, um, it's all strictly like business related property taxes, not like, uh, you and me. Uh, personal property taxes, you know. Okay. So um, it's it's a little boring, but uh, uh, you know, the gig's good. I've got a a great sales team. Um, I've got a great sales leader. The guy is I I spent ooh, four hours shadow or shadowing him today. Uh, you know, just he pulled out the SDR playbook and we went over it. And then after that, he started doing some cold calling and some emailing uh for prospects and uh, went into it. And I just kind of talked to him and he explained to me his process and how he goes about it. And then, you know, he's like, Oh, we'll go ahead and get into your, uh, your, uh, emailing sequences, you know, later on. And I was like, Hey, don't worry about it, man. I, I got that. I'm not even yeah. worried about the emails. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, man. Well, congratulations, man. I'm, I'm super stoked for you. I think it's perfect timing that we're obviously talking about kind of sales development right now. But, um, I guess for like the, the listeners out there, do you mind, like, obviously it's your first week, so I wouldn't expect you to know, like, every every little thing, but um, do you mind sharing a little bit more about, like, what Advantix um, kind of does in the market? Obviously, you touched upon a little bit more about, like, property taxes, but um, do you mind just telling, sharing a little bit more about, like, kind of what they do? Yeah, so um, they reach out to businesses of all sizes. Um, it can be, you know, small business that has 10 people. It can be larger businesses that have thousands of employees, right? So they, they contact these um, these businesses and ask them um, who exactly they're going through for their property taxes, or actually m more the uh, personal property taxes, right? So they're contacting them, seeing who uh, they're going through um, and if they can uh, potentially do business with these businesses and um, earning or saving them more money. Some of the, the businesses do it in... Like the smaller businesses, they just keep it all in house. So uh, it's a little bit more expensive, but they're not outsourcing it to any firms or anything like that. So um, we target those people because um, some of the software for um, property taxes is really expensive. So having an outside source um, firm do it may be cheaper. It all depends on if they are getting a good price on their software or not. And that's where we come in as the SDRs. We'll figure out exactly what they're using you know, we'll figure out what's going on and we'll see if we can help them if we're a fit or not. So, mm -hmm. um, and then same thing goes for the, uh, the larger, 
um, companies as well. You know, we'll see what we're doing and we'll see if we can compete, you know, with the, our competitors and see if we can earn their business and their trust. That's awesome, man. And um, are, is your role primarily like cold outbound? Are you working inbound leads? Do you kind of have an idea of like what the setup will be for your role specifically? Yeah, I'll be calling all the prospects. I'll be doing cold calls. Uh, my target is 75 a day minimum right now in the first 90 days. And then after that, they want me doing uh, 400, touch, or 400 touches a day minimum. That's awesome, man. Um, well, first off, congratulations on getting that job, man. It definitely seems like they, they hired the right person for the role. And I'm super stoked to see what you'll accomplish in the months ahead. Um, but I'm actually looking at your uh, LinkedIn right now. Um, do you mind sharing a little bit more about like your experience with the pre-hired kind of the sales training methodology and like the, the training program? And furthermore, do you, do you kind of mind sharing like what kind of, um, what kind of, brought you to that point where you just thought that you know tech sales and being an SDR was something that you wanted to do okay yeah no problem I'm not sure exactly how much I can share um, yeah but I, I'll give you what I can uh, please thanks man so I got out of the military in 2013 um, didn't really have any direction of where I was gonna go um, I did the infantry so I tried to get into the law enforcement did that for about two years spent too much money on it um, and one of my buddies was a mechanic and was like, hey, I can offer you a job. I was like, all right, well, at this point, I'll take what I can get. So I spent the next five years doing uh, mechanic work and I absolutely hated it. I was good at it, but I did not like doing it. Like it was just, it was never my passion. I never wanted to work on cars. My dad tried to get me to do it all the time when I was a kid. So uh, <laughs> the last uh, couple months I was a mechanic, I was just looking into getting out and doing something else right. So um, I was just scrolling through Facebook one day and I saw an ad and uh, it was about pre-hired and I was like, I, you know, get out of here. It's too good to be <laughs> true. Um, <laughs> but something in the back of my head was like, you know, no dummy, get back there, open it up, uh, <laughs> see what they have to offer. So I did. And um, I contacted them. They got back with me and we had a good conversation. And initially I was like, I was still on the edge. Right. And, uh, they're like, well, we have other veterans in the program if you'd like to talk to them and see what their experience is first, you know. So I did. And um, I talked to one guy for about 24 hours. I'm not even kidding about that before I even came back and said, hey, you know, I want in. Uh, I decided that uh, I'd be good at this kind of thing. So uh, I, I dove right in, got into the program. You know, they set you up with a mentor. The mentor is with you every step of the way. Um, and the nice thing is, is uh, even after you're done with the program, like I am now, um, I can still go back to these people and ask them for any advice or any help. You know, like if I'm struggling at work, you know, but hey, you know, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm that's having awesome. problems with. So uh, that's really nice. Um, <clears throat> so during the program, you know, they, they teach you about cold calling, prospecting, you know, qualifying leads and everything, you know, like. Uh, they teach you, you know, inter or they do like interview preps and the interview preps. I honestly felt that's where I got the most um, out of the whole thing, because I, I went into these interviews. <laughs> the interviews for SDRs are nothing like any other interview interviews I've ever had. All right. <laughs> um, you have to know you have to be on top of your game, really. You know, like I, I went into these my interviews and I didn't I didn't go in you know, half-assed, excuse my language, but like, oh, it's please. Just not this. <laughs> <laughs> I, I legit went in there and like the day before my interviews, I was always like pulling up all my, my, uh, course materials and like, okay, you know, if they ask me these questions, this is, you know, about how I'm going to give my answer, you know? And like, I, I went in fully prepared for everything. And, uh, the interview prep I felt was fantastic. Um, the course in general for pre-hired was awesome. Uh, amazing um, and I'm really really happy uh, that I took it because honestly I wouldn't be I wouldn't have this opportunity that I have now without it so it seems like they at your at the pre-hired uh, kind of program that you did you, you pretty much got like an entire overview of like the profession all the way from like how to facilitate a cold call all the way to like interview practice and they're kind of as a resource for you currently still even even now that you've landed a job Yes. Yep. Uh, it's a uh, Slack or we, there's a Slack community for us. Um, and I, I even have, you know, a bunch of the mentors on LinkedIn. So even if I can't reach them on Slack, I can get them on LinkedIn and 
uh, figure out exactly what it is that I may be doing wrong at my current position. You know, um, they may not have any tax related um, experience, but they'll be able to help me. Like, let's say I'm not getting any um, answers on any of my cold emails or anything like that. You know, I could be like, hey, what am I doing wrong? What, what can I do that'll help me get more responses for my emails or even my cold calls, you know? Absolutely. Um, and was like this whole pre-hired or excuse me, pre-hired program, was that like remote? Did you have to like commute to a physical location or how did that typically work? Nope. Everything was done on the internet. Um, everything you're given, I think it was 90 days or something like, yeah, I think it was about 90 days to finish the course. Um, you can go beyond the 90 days. You just have to set it up with the, um, the people who facilitate, or facilitate the whole thing, you know, and, mm -hmm. uh, they're more than willing to, you know, if you have valid reasons why you couldn't complete in 90 days, they're going to be completely willing to say, Hey man, you know, go ahead and take an extra week or two or however long you need, you know? So, but, um, the, the whole course is very manageable in the 90 days. Uh, I think I did it in about 45 days. I have two kids and a wife, you know, and I was working a full-time job. So I was trying to get in, you know, an hour or two a night when I could. Awesome. So it seems like it was pretty flexible with your, with your schedule. That's awesome, man. Yep. Um, really appreciate that overview. Um, and dude, by the way, you know, thank you so much for your service within the army here. Um, would love to just touch upon like, you mind just sharing a little bit more about your experience in the military and I guess kind of how you got into the military and your experience in the military and, um, you know, furthermore, like, are there any skills that you think you learned in the military that kind of prepared you to take on such a, such an interesting role now in tech sales, man? I'm just super interested in that. Um, yeah, so <clears throat> I joined the military in 2009. I signed up in 2008, but uh, the job at the time, everybody was signing up. So I got placed into um, a reservation uh, for the position that I signed up for. Uh, eventually, uh, eventually, a spot opened up, so I went into the military. Um, I was in the uh, infantry for four years and some uh, 16 weeks. And um, so physical skills learned in the military do not translate at all. <laughs> um, <laughs> But like mental skills, like uh, I go into everything completely prepared, like 100 percent. Like I don't like I said, I don't half ass things. Uh, the military definitely helped me hone this um, because I can honestly tell you I wasn't the greatest student in high school. Let's be honest. Um, I, I, I did good. I had good grades, but like I was very. Uh, I'm trying to think of the word. <laughs> you're good. Uh, you're good. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, the, the military definitely, you know, did that uh, a solid for me on that one. Uh, that They helped me with that. They they boosted my confidence. I was a confident guy before, but now I'm like, I can back up my confidence with the uh, ability to actually perform most things that I do at, you know, 100%. So, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that. I served from 2009 till 2013. Uh, I went to Afghanistan twice, you know, I miss the guys from the military, but I don't miss the bureaucratic bull crap. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Got it, man. Um, well, thank you so much for your service, man. Definitely much appreciated on my end. And yeah, man, um, I actually worked with a military veteran as well at one of my last companies. Um, I would love to hear your thoughts, man. Like for anyone out there that's listening that maybe know it is in the military currently or maybe kind of transitioned out like if, if they're potentially considering a role in tech sales like but are kind of like iffy on it like what what kind of advice do you have for them well uh it's going to be very dependent on you all right if you don't think that you're going to look i, I met a lot of soldiers in the military okay they love to drink they love to party and then there are others that don't. All right. And that's fine. You can do whatever you want. But at some point, you got to grow up. You know, you got to get over it. Um, if you are one of those people, not you particularly, but like everybody else who may be watching, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, at some point, you got to get a big boy career. And, you know, that's where I'm at now. Um, you can do it. You just got to put in the effort for it. That's all. For real. Like, 
it's not hard to learn anything outside of the military. They drill everything into you at the military. Take that away. Take that mental fortitude that you get there and bring it into the civilian uh, workforce because it's not hard. It's really easy to do. Absolutely, man. And what I love about tech sales is like you can you can honestly make so much money without having like the credentials of like a master's or a doctor, you know what I mean? Um, you know, as long as you, like you mentioned, like have that mental fortitude and that drive you can seriously make yourself a, a good, honest living just by, like you said, just sitting down and focusing and, and really just hone in on those skills, man. So definitely yep. appreciate that. Um, but I know obviously you've been in the, been in your STR role for <laughs> a couple of days now. So um, I'm curious, man, like what do you, what has, what for you has been like the most interesting part of kind of transitioning into like tech sales and like, where do you think your, your biggest challenge will be as you kind of transition into this industry as well? Um, so I think my biggest challenge is going to be cold calling. Uh, it's not so much like the calling aspect of it. I think it's going to be more along the lines of like, people not picking up but they'll respond to my email you know and like they won't answer my phone calls it's like so like i guess the rejection portion of it like and even then it's not even um i'm not afraid to get told no it's just more or less like okay now i need to figure out how i'm going to still get past this rejection and maybe potentially you know uh, years down the line, get this customer, you know, cause at the, at the, at this point in time, they don't need it maybe six months down the road or so they might need it then, you know? So I got to mm -hmm. figure out how I'm going to go about doing those things or types of things. Absolutely. Um, and I know obviously you've only been there for a couple of days, man, but do you mind sharing like a little bit more about like your onboarding experience, kind of like what it consisted of? I know you said like, they give you like a sales playbook and you really like the director of sales there. Do you mind just sharing a little bit more about like your onboarding experience? Obviously like this is the first tech company that you're transitioning into after, you know, doing a lot of work with your hands and going through the, the pre-hired program. Like how's that been so far for you, man? Uh, it's been very, very relaxing and very uh, nice to not be, busting my butt every day <laughs> like don't get me wrong i'm still working hard but i'm not sure. working physically as hard as i was you know um but uh the onboarding has been pretty damn good so far like you know they gave me a, a shirt i don't have it on right now but it's uh they gave me a shirt um they gave me the the sdr playbook um they, you know they gave me some homework assignments just to you know complete no big deal they were easy enough um and then on yesterday on my first day they actually uh set aside an hour and a half for uh, all six of us to go to lunch. So we went to lunch, you know, and we just, you know, talked and introduced ourselves. Uh, and that was real nice. And then today we only had the 30 minute lunch, but no big deal. Um, but, you know, I, I learned about some of these guys and unfortunately I'm the oldest out of everybody, including my, uh, the only one who isn't older than me is my uh, senior manager. Uh, <laughs> uh, he's definitely a lot older than me and everybody else is much younger than me. Um, but everyone's real cool. Everyone's uh, chill. Nobody's like, you know, hey, I'm the top dog. You know, you 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 ain't yeah. shit. Everybody's real, real professional, if I if I if you will. So absolutely, um, haven't had any issues yet, and I'm 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 actually really enjoying where I'm at, and I'm glad I took this job. That's awesome, man. How many other SDRs, or how big is the sales team over there? Uh, so it's six people. So you have the senior manager. Uh, He's right below the VP of sales. I don't really consider him because uh, I really haven't met him that, uh, that yet. You know, I, I was introduced to him, but that's it. Um, then you got the senior sales manager. Then you have the uh, senior SDR. And then the rest of us are just SDRs. Mm -hmm. Got it. Appreciate that, man. Um, and, dude, I'm, I'm looking at your LinkedIn profile. I love this quote here by Tony Robbins. Uh, success leaves clues. It's up to you how to interpret those clues, man. Like, you mind sharing a little bit more? I guess why this kind of quote just means so much to you, or like, how, what do, what does this quote mean to you, man? Uh, well, <laughs> I, I won't lie. Uh, before I got into the program, I was talking to a couple of the people um, in the program, the veterans in the program, and one of them told or said this quote to me, and I was like. For some reason, that just stuck with me, and I was like, okay, you know, I'm watching all these people do uh, good things, and then as I was, you know, taking the course, I was adding all these other people on LinkedIn, you know, and 
just seeing the success that they're having made me like, okay, I'm in the right path now. You know, I, I'm in this path where these people are going out and get success. I can do the same thing. So like that, that's quote just resonated with me and it stuck with me. Absolutely, man. Um, I'm curious as well, Thomas, like what are some things that you've kind of learned along this whole process, I guess, since you started pre-hired and obviously your new role now, like, are you more active on LinkedIn? Um, oh. Have you kind of like paid attention or focusing more on, on certain aspects now that you're obviously a tech sales professional now or kind of curious about that as well? Yeah. Uh, so I created my LinkedIn back in 2013 and I logged back into it for the first time <laughs> four or five months ago. Yeah. <laughs> hadn't touched it since then, but since then I've literally just blown it up and I check it every couple hours whenever I can at work. Um, I check it a lot more often, but at home, you know, like I said, I've got two kids, so I take care of them. But when I can or not when I can, that sounds bad. <laughs> when I'm home, they're my priority. And then I'll check, you know, LinkedIn here and there. Uh, but I, I find myself um, looking at other people's quotes and like uh, I've got, you know, like uh, a bunch of different people uh, uh, that I just sometimes I feel a little stalkerish because I'll see they'll they'll put like uh, the the CEO for um, seamless AI he posts things all the time and I'm always reading them because sometimes they're funny and sometimes they're like hey this is serious this is good stuff so like the content that I'm getting on uh, LinkedIn is real good um, and then you know my my job at Advantax, uh, they get their their uh, leads primarily from LinkedIn. So uh, they were teaching me exactly what they were what they're looking for um, when they're going through LinkedIn to figure out you know what prospects are going to be good for their uh, company. That's awesome, man. Um, I guess for anyone out there that's obviously interested in SDR role, like, are there any specific tools or platforms that you recommend they kind of familiarize themselves with, just so? They're obviously kind of similar to you, just like more prepared to take on that role. Just just having that experience and knowledge like of those tools. Um, do you kind of have any recommendations around that? Yeah. Um, so you, Seamless AI is free. You can use that one. Um, get get very, very familiar with uh, LinkedIn. Like I'm not kidding. Make that shit your bread and butter. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, LinkedIn, Seamless AI. Uh, we use Salesforce at, um, at Vantex, but uh, I was familiar with uh, HubSpot before that. So I went in there and I've actually been learning um, Salesforce going through my last two days. I picked it up really quickly because it's pretty similar to HubSpot. But um, so Salesforce, uh, HubSpot, Seamless, LinkedIn, and then my personal favorites um, was Interseller. I thought Interseller was a really, really good tool for SDRs. What, what is Interstellar, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, Interstellar is a lead generation tool. Basically, it works with um, with LinkedIn, Salesforce. Um, it works with CRMs. Um, basically, when you're looking up prospects on LinkedIn, um, it has a little button that you can click. It's basically the same thing as, um, as Seamless AI. I'm assuming you know what Seamless AI is, right? Huh? So for the viewers, um, Seamless AI and Interseller, they they pull the information from the contact that you're viewing currently, and it'll give you email address, phone numbers, maybe, um, as long as you know it's available um, to the to the internet. So um, Interseller combines um, what Seamless AI does, and it also um, does uh i'm sorry email sequences all right so you can have email se sequences go out and it does it all in just one and that's interstellar interstellar was really nice um i had a 30-day trial of it when i was doing um, my job out outreach um so i was able to see you know who opened my emails how many times they opened my emails um i didn't have to worry like once my first email was sent i didn't have to worry about um, sending a, a second or a third email mm -hmm. for the next couple of days because Interstellar just automatically does that. Um, mm -hmm. un unless I get a reply to my email, then it won't do it, you know. But if there if there is no reply, it'll send out the second and third email for you, or however many emails um, that you do for prospecting. So um, uh, Interstellar was a really really handy tool for me, and I really enjoyed that one. 
That's awesome, man. Um, all of this is super, super helpful info for our viewers here, man. So definitely appreciate that. Um, but yeah, man, um, I guess my last question here before we kind of wrap up the pod, um, for anyone listening out there that may just be interested or maybe not sure if sales is right for them or, you know, kind of in the same boat as you, just not sure if, you know, what they're currently doing is really satisfying their needs financially and, and mentally, I guess. Um, you know, and, and let's just say maybe they're also considering like pre-hire or just jumping into that SDR role. Like what general advice do you have for them? It was a big leap of faith for me. All right. I was really, really skeptical. I won't lie. Um, but I just stuck with it. You know, I, I didn't, I stuck with it and I, I did everything to the best of my ability. And I asked for help when I needed help and the help that I got was really good help too. So it wasn't, uh, it wasn't just, you know, hey, you'll be fine. No, it was, all right, let's go ahead and show you how to do it. Um, and figure, let's figure this out together, you know, that kind of thing. So when you're going through these things, make sure you find somebody that knows what they're doing um, and have them help you. Like, if you need the help, um, there are people out there that'll do it. Hell, I'll fucking do it. You know, um, I, I don't know as much as like m maybe you, but like uh, I'm willing to help anybody I can. You know, like if they if they have any questions, you know, I'll give them any answers I can provide. Um, but there are people out there that will help you. Um, initially, um, before I took this job, I wasn't making very much money. I mean, I was making enough to get by. Um, but I've doubled my income because of this, and uh, I'm very, very happy that I took this uh, this jump. Dude, I'm super, super stoked for you. You have no idea, man. Would love to actually like have another podcast with you, like maybe six months down the line, just to kind of check in with you to see how things are going. I'm sure you'll be an AE by then, but um, <laughs> dude, I'm, I couldn't be happier for you and and like your attitude about just always wanting to help others out, dude definitely take you a long way you have a really good mentality so i'm just super excited to see where you're headed man um are there any like books or resources obviously the seamless ai guy you mentioned was a really good resource for you any books or podcasts that you recommend to viewers out there um i haven't really gotten into those yet uh i I've, I've kind of been taking it one step at a time but um uh, my company, they've been recommend, or there's like a literally a list of podcasts and a list of books. It's all on my desk at work. I need to bring it home so I can look those up and get them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've been told nonstop, you know, like listen to podcasts, listen or read these books, you know, like so. I'm gonna do it. I just needed to uh, get an actual list, you know. And I see people on LinkedIn post like there's this one guy who's like. I've got a book out. It's uh, 126 uh, tips and tricks for SDRs, and I'm gonna get it. But it, uh, every <laughs> time I see it, I'm like, uh, I don't know. But you know what? Hey, yeah. Anything now, you know? So especially Absolutely. right now, we're still learning. 100%, man. Um, appreciate that. And I guess to anyone listening out there, whether they be a company or a person that you know just wants to get some guidance out there, like, where can they reach you? Where Where is the best? What is the best contact info for you? Uh, just LinkedIn, honestly. Uh, I, I'm on it every single day for work. Uh, it's literally either sitting in the background or I'm looking through it just, you know, for potential prop, uh, prospects. So, you know, just look me up. It's uh, Thomas Jansen uh, and you'll find me. I'm probably maybe the only Thomas Jansen with a military photo on there. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty easy to spot out. <laughs> I love it, Thomas. Well, thank you so much for being a, a phenomenal guest, Thomas. Um, I know you have definitely inspired myself and a lot of other people out there. Um, so super excited to kind of have this go live here. But um, thank you so much to everyone out there from the Sales Dev Squad community. Hope you guys have enjoyed and taken a lot of value from what Thomas has said here. But thank you guys for tuning in to another episode. And we will catch you guys on the next one.